In this video, we will look at how to create a pop-up from scratch, add content and style it. If you haven't done so yet, watch our introduction video on pop-ups, which will give you a good overview of what they are and where to find them in the builder. I've added the link in the description below. Here I have my page and a call to action section. I want to add an on-click pop-up here for visitors, inviting them to sign up to my newsletter. How we build out this pop-up will work exactly the same for both the on-click pop-ups as well as for the automatic triggers and conditions. The builders are identical. Click on the button, then go to the link icon and select from the dialog box pop-up. Click in the pop-up field and choose add a blank block. This block will now be inserted in the pop-up field. To edit it, click on it. Essentially, the pop-up builder is no different to the normal Brezzy builder. You will feel quite familiar working with the interface. You have your block or pop-up canvas and in the middle, your content area. As usual, you bring in elements to build your pop-up block. Let's do that first. Drag in a text element for our main heading, another one for our description, and then a form element in which we will set up our mailer integration and an image element in the right-hand column. Notice how the container automatically grows as you place more content within it. Change our main heading to subscribe and win. Set the font to Montserrat and make it larger. For our subheading, change the text. Let's do some styling to the subheading. Set our font also to Montserrat, a bit bigger and reduce the line height. Up next, our good friend, the form element, which we will integrate with a mailer extension like MailChimp, Campaign Manager, MailerLite, or any of our current integrations. Delete the fields we don't need and keep only the email field. Change the button text to say, sign up now. To connect the form to a mailer service, you can watch our videos on mailer integration. Image next, click on the image, then the image field and select an image from the media library. Our content for the pop-up, though very basic, is done. Row styling and settings. You'll notice that the content comes with a row and that is what is giving us the default white background. To style the row, go to the top left-hand corner and click to open up the settings. Here you can set a background image, add an overlay, or just make it solid background. To change the padding and margins or apply rounded corners, select more settings. Close button. At the top right hand corner of your pop-up, you'll notice the close button. To style the button, click on it to open the options toolbar. If you go into the icon settings, you'll see options to change the size of the icon and make changes to the background. If the icon options dialog box overlaps the close icon, you won't be able to see the visual changes as you make them. In this case, let me show you a way how you can set the icon and have the visual cue at the same time. Go to the right of the toolbar and here you'll find the corner placement options. Clicking on it will cycle the position clockwise around the four corners of the bounding box of the pop-up. Bottom right hand corner, bottom left hand corner, top left hand corner and back to the top right hand corner. Let's put it at the bottom right hand corner and now I can clearly see those styling changes I am making to the icon. The lateral and vertical sliders allow you to adjust the X and Y axis alignment of the icon. You can set the size of the icon to predetermined or to your custom values. Before we work with the icon background, let's go and set the colors first. For the default state, let's put the icon color to this and the background is something that will nicely contrast. And then for the hover state, we switch them around. Hop back to the icon background sizing options, adjust the background size and apply rounded corners. The last option for the close button is the choice between placing the button outside the pop-up row container or inside. Once you are done with all the styling to the close button, place it at the corner where you want it to appear. So far, we've looked at how to build a pop-up applying styling to the row container and style the close button. To make changes to the overlay, we go up to the block settings. And here you'll be able to add a background image 
as you would with any other block. If you want no overlay, simply go to overlay and reduce the opacity to zero, making it fully transparent. I actually think this looks pretty good for this pop-up, so I'm going to leave it like this. But if you want an overlay with some transparency instead, it's as simple as removing the background image and the overlay and set your opacity. The overlay will always cover 100% of your screen. Within the pop-up block settings, you have additional options here on the placement of the pop-up itself. This allows you to determine the vertical alignment, bottom, top, and middle. The one next to it is for horizontal alignment, right, left, and middle. Set these two settings to place the pop-up strategically where you want it to appear on the overlay. You have additional control over the pop-up container sizing. Go to the block settings and click on the cog icon. The first option allows you to set the width in either pixels or percentage. Currently it is set at 1170 pixels. If you put it to percentage, you can easily have the pop-up cover 100% of the screen display width. Use the slider to adjust it to the width you want. Similar options apply to height. You can choose here between auto, which is the default. As you've seen, with this setting, the height of the pop-up adjusts as you add content. On custom, you can choose again between pixels and percentage. If you just need it at full height, simply select full height from the drop-down box. Let's put it on full height to show you how the pop-up contents alignment option works. With the row container at full height, this option vertically aligns the content inside the row container to bottom, top, or middle. Back to auto. Right, you have designed a good pop-up and you maybe want to use it again. Make sure to save it. Once saved, it will appear in the pop-up block library under saved and you can load it again when building future pop-ups and make content and styling changes where needed. And even better than saved pop-ups is the global save function. This allows you to not only save the pop-up, but when you use it at other places on your website, any changes you make to one pop-up will reflect in all the others linked to that global pop-up. This way you can make changes globally without the need to go and apply those changes to each and every pop-up respectively. Let's do it with this pop-up we've created. Go to the block settings, pop up and activate make it global. You see the little globe icon appears, indicating that this pop up block is now a global block. Exit the builder and go to another area on the page and add a pop up. Select global pop ups and insert the save pop up by clicking on it. Same pop up and again you'll notice the global icon. If you make a change now here, like adding an overlay to the background, it will also update the other instance of your pop-up. Let's go check. Indeed, it's synced very nicely. And whenever you want to delink a global pop-up, you simply go to the block settings of the pop-up you want to delink and deselect, make it global. Now this pop-up will be independent again and won't affect the others that are still global. Just remember, once you've delinked the global block, you can't relink it to the global once again. A few more features while we are here at the Make It Global option. Let's have a quick look at the other options. Scroll page behind will allow visitors to keep browsing and scrolling your page, even with the pop-up present. This is typically the case when you want to place a cookies consent pop-up on your site. The close tab has options to regulate how the pop-up can be closed. The first option allows users to click on the overlay area, which is the outside area around the pop-up, to exit the pop-up and close it. For this one, display close button, you'll mostly leave it checked. What you can do with the slider below it is to set a delay, which will delay the appearance of the close button. Let's set it to three seconds and see how it works. Save it and preview it on the front end. We click on the button, pop.
pop-up appears, but hey, no close button. But wait, and three seconds later, there you have it. Use this strategically to avoid visitors closing pop-ups too quickly when they appear. This way you kind of force them to read it first before they can close it. Just don't put a crazy value like 10 seconds for the delay, as no one wants to wait that long. Let's just quickly talk about tablet and mobile responsiveness. As always, you have the ability to make changes to your pop-up responsively so that it will look good on other devices like tablets and mobiles. This is very important to check and check again. Otherwise, your pop-up won't display properly on a cell phone and may negatively affect the visitor's experience to your website. And remember this useful shortcut key, Control, Command, Plus or Minus on your keyboard. This will cycle through the various display options. In the video on triggers and conditions, we also look at how you can set a global automatic trigger, which will allow you to choose on which device the pop-up will display. And that's our wrap for this session. There is no other pop-up builder on the market like Brizzy's, giving you full control and all the flexibility to build any pop-up you can imagine. Place it where you want to, including triggers and conditions. We know you will love it. Remember to subscribe to us here on YouTube and for updates and the latest news, visit us at brizzy.io. <music>